Hey everyone, Johnny here. In my last video about creating a node group that would allow us to create some hanging cables, you can check out the link here. We set up this node group that created a drooping cable between each point of a curve. We then instanced that curve on a star and created this effect. However, I got to thinking that the effect this created, although cool, was pretty unrealistic. This whole thing needed more randomness. My first thought was to just plug a random vector into the offset. I would only have the Z be affected, so I would set the X and Y maximum to zero, and then the, the Z would go from zero to negative one. I'll go ahead and plug this in so you can see what happens. As you can see, there's some weirdness going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our star instance for a moment. As you can see, the cables no longer droop evenly. It took me a minute to realize what was going on, and I want to explain it here. In order to figure out what was going on, I went back to just a normal Bezier curve. I'm going to duplicate this one and get rid of the geometry node tree off of it. I'll use the method that I used in my first video. So changing these to vector, having all my handles selected, just selecting these, and then pulling them down. When I do that, it looks right. But as you can see here, this one is coming off to the side, and this one isn't lining up the same. That's when I realized what was going on. We're creating a random value for each point of our curve, and then using that random value to set the left and right handle position offsets. For each one of these points, we have a left handle and a right handle. Now let's say this first handle gets a random value of one. Both the left and right handle will have that offset of one taken away from it. Now let's say this one is two, this one is three, and say this one is two again. On this first section of the curve, this side is being lowered by one, and this side is being lowered by two. On this one, this one is being lowered by two, and this one is being lowered by three. But that isn't what we want to have happen. If this one is one, we want this one to also be one. If this one is two, we want, we want this one to be two. So that both sides of each loop are being pulled down the same amount. So that means the random number that's being generated for point zero for its right side needs to be the same one that's being generated for the left side of point one. But that's not how the random number generator works. So we need to move that information over in order for that to happen. Let's see how we can accomplish that. So let's go ahead and get this set up. In my node group, I'm gonna go ahead and add my random number generator and set it to vector. Driving both the left and the right. This is of course gonna give us the same problem that we had before. So let's split out a second random number generator and have that drive the right side. Again, it's still the same problem. Here's where we need to know a little bit about the random number generator. Because these are not true random number generators, they have something called a seed. That means if you use this random number generator with a given seed, you'll always get the same sequence of numbers. So in this case, every time I open Blender, with the seed set at zero on these, I'll get the same result. That way my curves aren't jumping around every time I go to render. The problem is, if we had random number generators working with a bunch of different objects and they all had the same seed, they'd all get the same results. So the random value node has another socket called ID. This gets the implicit ID of the object that's being worked with. In this case, because we're working with a field value and the set handle positions works with the point domain, the ID is the ID of each point. And since we're not doing anything funny with this curve, the IDs match the indices. This is ID 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So in this very simple case, what I can do is add an input ID node and plug it in to the left hand side. Then I'll also plug it in to the right hand side. But what I'll do is add a utilities math node and add one to that value. So now when I'm evaluating the zero point, the random value for the left hand side is going to be generated by the ID for zero. 
but the random value for the right hand side is going to be generated by the ID for one, which is this point right here. That means that this right handle and this left handle are going to be generated using the same ID and that will continue for each one. Now, like I said, this only works for the simplest of cases where the IDs of your points are the same as the indices of your points. And you really can't trust that that's always going to be the case, especially as your node trees get more and more complex. So because of that, we want to future proof our node tree just a little bit. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to use the transfer attribute node. So under attribute, we'll add transfer attribute and we're going to set it to index mode. We'll change the type to integer. Our left hand random number generator is going to get the ID by default. So we can leave that one alone. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our curve and put it in target. That means that's the source for our attribute. Then we want to take whatever our attribute is. In this case, it's the ID. And then we'll take that attribute and we'll put it out into this node. Right now, you will get an error message because the data type coming in is a curve and the transfer attribute node still isn't verified to completely work with curves, but it will work in this case. But right now, this doesn't do anything because all we've done is we've taken the ID at the current index and then just passed it along to this random value node. So that's the same ID that's just getting implicitly passed here. What we're gonna do though, is we want to say, take the ID from a different index and stick it over here. I'm going to take my index input, put it into this add node. So now each index is going to get one added to it. And that's going to drive the index of my transfer attribute node. So this setup will work no matter if our IDs match our indexes or not, which is really important, especially as geometry nodes get more and more complicated. So now I'm going to drag my minimum random value vector to my output and my maximum to my output. I'll clean up my nodes just a little and then hit tab to go back to my main tree. Now I'm going to even up all of the top points of these sections so that we can see we're getting random values for each segment. Now this is where this gets really interesting. I'm going to bring back my instances. I'll put my star into points and my curve into instances. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, that looks terrible. Well, there's a reason. Our node group doesn't like that it's getting instances now instead of actual curves. So we want to turn this bundle of instances into one full curve. To do that, we use the realize instance node. So under instances, we'll choose realize instances and we'll drop that right here. Now I'll adjust my offsets, and there we go. Of course, now if we want to make these solid, we'll simply add a curve to mesh and a curve circle as the profile and turn down the radius of those circles. You will notice that these are a little chunky, so we might want to turn up the resolution as well. To do that, I'll add a curve, set spline resolution, and drop it here after my realize instances. I can then ramp this up to get these nice and smooth. Of course, using my node group here, I can adjust the randomness of these droopings. And that starts to look pretty cool. I know this one was a bit more complicated, but I hope you were able to follow along. If not, ask some questions down below. There's so many different things that you can do with these geometry nodes, and this is still just scratching the surface. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.